All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Derek Kirby of the Dallas Prospect, joined again by my dude, Big Game James. And today we are talking some Dallas Mavericks here. They are riding a four-game win streak. Things are looking good, but they've got themselves a test tonight as they travel to Milwaukee to take on Giannis and the Bucks. James, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. Really good since the last time we talked. The last time we talked, we were both frustrated about our Mavericks. Uh, yep. What they were going to do. And all of a sudden, boom, now we're talking and we got a four game win streak. Hopefully, we can get that to five. Uh, knocking off these bucks, that would be tremendous. That'll be a tremendous way to cap this off. Absolutely. And yeah, after, like you said, after we talked last time, it was the Bulls game, like right on the heels of that. And I was like, man, it, it's early in the year, like 10 games in, obviously, but. Man, you want to talk about a low point early on in the year. Mm -hmm. Losing to Chicago, even though you didn't have Luka or KP. That was rough, because Chicago's not going to go anywhere this year. So, that being what it is, the fact that you've rolled off four straight wins there. And yeah, you're playing shorthanded right now, but at the same time, you got KP back last game. He had 21 minutes, 16 points, knocked down, I think, four threes and nine attempts. Like... He looks good. A couple blocks as well. Yeah. The rebounding numbers weren't there. Four boards, but you know, for the first game back, I'm not a little. I'm not that surprised that he would be a little bit reserved. Um, but he didn't look scared to me. Like there were times he drove and attacked the basket and made strong finishes at the rim despite contact. So we'll see. But it's uh, it's encouraging that even though you're shorthanded, you got your second superstar back, and that immediately changes the equation. Right, right. And the biggest thing too, though. Even though he didn't have a great rebounding game, somebody named Willie Cauley Stein did. He had 14 boards yep. offensive, and that was a good thing. And that's the one of the things we have been talking about, man. It's kind of crazy. Remember, we've talked on Twitter about that, how, you know, hey, we probably need to switch out Dwight or limit his minutes, cut down his minutes, get Cauley Stein in there, Cleaver, and it's almost like he heard us. Uh, Ricky heard us, and right after that, Kali Stein started, Cleaver, uh, Cleaver uh, Maxi been starting, and you saw the difference in the rebounding. You've seen the difference with the spacing, and you've seen the athletic ability that Kali Stein, we've been talking about, shows. He may not get the offensive rebound, but because he's so athletic and bouncy, mm -hmm. he can and he's long, he can knock the ball out of somebody's hand and keep kind of tipping. And, you know, he keeps it active. And that's what I was talking about, keeping it active, be, just being active. If you can do that, it creates rebounds. It creates movement. It creates things. And that's what I wanted to see. And I think that's what we've been seeing in this four-game win streak as well. Yeah, and the Mavericks are 4-0 since he joined the starting lineup. He had three blocks as well in that game, so it's not just that he was cleaning up the glass. He was mm -hmm. bothering shots. He was rejecting shots. And when you have him getting three, KP getting two, which KP averaged last year, and Maxi Kleba, who's an underrated shot blocker as well, he won't get a ton of blocks, but he'll average better than a block a game. He's a guy that bothers a lot of shots, though. You have three very good rim protectors on this team, and that is mm -hmm. very encouraging because... As I was talking with any the other day, we talked about how, you know, the modern NBA, most of the league, not everyone, but most of the league, everything is a three or it's right at the rim trying to finish. And so if you can take away or at least cut down on the efficiency of those shots around the rim, you're going to limit a team and say, all right, if you if you want to beat us, you got to shoot the absolute lights out for the entirety of the game from the outside. That's what you're going to have to do to beat us because you come in here, we got three different dudes ready to throw it back in your face. And it just, it changes the attitude and energy of everything. It's completely different than when you're having to, um, you know, when a team can get to the rim at will and just finish. And it's like easy layup after easy layup. And you're going down the other end, trying to match them rather than set the tone. Right. Right. And like I said, now you got KP back. You got Carly Stein as a, as a solid seven footer. KP comes back in the lineup. Now all of a sudden we get some good size. You get what I'm saying? Yep. And it, Carly Stein gives KP that freedom. That's what I want. Give KP that freedom with that athletic ability. I think, you know, I'm excited to see those, that lineup, how it grows and with Luca in there. And then me and you were talking about how Luca stepped up defensively as well. Because I feel like now some other players, and Wando has got some time. Trey Burke has been balling out. He had a big game with that 29 points. Mm -hmm. So other guys have taken off a little bit of the pressure. So when you can rest a little bit, now I can get a steal here. or I can get me a block. We talked about it. He had four blocks. I 
snaps in his last game. Yep. You know what I mean? So those things help when other guys are stepping up. It makes it easier for Luka and that he can do even more. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And uh, something as well to keep an eye on. Uh, KP came back, looked good, but he is listed as probable tonight due to a left ankle sprain. He tweaked it early on in the game last night. Probable means he'll probably play, but there is just a little hair where you're like, oh, man, come on, man. man like, dog. let's That's let's hang real. in there. <laughs> hey, come on, dog. Yeah. And they need to stop being so fragile with him, too, though. If Okay, you tweet the little ankle. Okay, how many people tweet ankles in basketball? Come on, man. Yeah. Get your butt back on that court and let's play some basketball because we need him out there. We just started getting this little streak. He looked good in this Charlotte game. This is a big game against Milwaukee. He needs to come in and play in this game. Yeah, no, I, I think he will, and I think he'll still be effective in that regard. But you referenced earlier the, the defensive improvement on this team. Obviously, KP, new to the mix, it goes beyond that. Luca has really stepped up and looked like he's emerging as a... I, I mean, he's got to do it for a while before we start talking real two-way player status. Uh, but at the very least, he's capable. And he's really mm -hmm. flash out. Like, we saw flashes in the bubble where it was like, oh, okay, so he can actually lock down and make a dude really have to work for it. And he can be mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a pest defender as well in that regard. Granted, Pest defender usually refers to like a JJ Barea or something, a small guy, not a guy that's six foot eight, six foot nine. But he can he can bother guys in that regard. And then you saw you've seen it in this four game stretch here with the Mavericks. He's turned things around, not just offensively. Yeah, we see that he's averaging more than twenty seven points, like nine uh, assists or something like that. I don't have his exact stats in front of me. Actually, that's a lie. I do. It's just a different tab. Uh, so he's <laughs> averaging. Let's see, 27.4, 9.6 rebounds, and 8.3 assists this year is Luka. He's turned it around, and even the three-point percentage is starting to climb up again. He's still not to 30% yet, but the dude four games ago was like 6%, so we got to keep that in mind. Uh, but mm -hmm. he's, he's bothering guys. Like He had four block shots and two steals through three quarters the other day against Charlotte. That's, that's a major turnaround, and they're not like weak side, oh, the guy just never saw him. No, it's like Gordon Hayward making a move and him just recovering and swatting the shot as it's leaving his hand. Like, that is timing. That's actual, like, that. that's different than clean, clean up block and the guy never saw you or something like that. That's actual timing and anticipation from a defender and recovering. Like, he's actually putting the effort there. We feel like he's had the tools for a while to be at least a capable defender. I think now looking at this, it's like, okay, that's just one more thing that you might have to expel energy on. And, you know, that's as much as you do offensively. That's a big ask to ask someone for that. But you see how if he really tries to and locks himself in, he can actually be, I think, a legitimate two-way player. And that is elite, elite status when you can handle both ends of the floor. I mean, that's what they loved about Jordan. That's what they loved about Kobe is that they could score on you. They could do all those things. But if they needed to lock you down, uh, if they needed to get a big defensive play, mm -hmm. they were the ones that stepped up, and those were the stars. And that's why they got the respect of not just averaging 30 some a game but being first team, all NBA, second team, all NBA consistently. And that's when you get a lot of respect in the league, being a two-way player. Also, in that big game, what, what, what was, was the, to me was the – Hype win to me for this year was the Denver Nuggets game. Yeah. When we went to overtime, that was the great game for me. But even in that game, he had five steals in that game. Yep. You know what I mean? And so – Career high. That That's really damn good. You know what I mean? That's five away from almost – and he was one rebound away. That's almost one, you know, from a quadruple double. Like, so he yep. was balling in that game. So, I mean, as I said before, when you get the Richardsons and then – um as I said before, Iwando got some good minutes, Brunson, uh, Trey Berg, those guys in the backcourt that can help him because Iwando's a good defensive player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He may not give you an offer a lot of you on that scoring ability, but he'll get you some rebounds, but he'll, he'll uh, play really good defense. And one thing I notice about Luka, when them other guys are starting to lock in, like an Iwando or any of those other mm -hmm. guys are locking in defensively, he tends to start doing it as well. It's like he's, he's not going to be the guy that, like, oh, okay, everybody else is working hard on defense and I'm not. He's not that guy. That's what I like about him, even though as young as he is. He'll, he'll dial in as well when he sees them other people, other team locking in. Because even in that game when we uh, when uh, Dallas uh, 
dang, who did we beat? And they had a bad shooting game. They had the two guards, uh, Miami Heat, even oh, yeah. that game. One of the reasons why we won that game, I feel, is that every time they had a possession, we were sticky. We were up in their face. We were yep. guarding them, denying them. That's what I love. And when I see Luca, Luca does that, when he sees other guys doing it, he will do it too. And as you said before, Luca's a big, big guy. So when he's dialed in and he sits down, it's hard to move around him. He's a big boy. Yeah. He can body you and he can put he can lean on you and get you tired. And and that's good for him. So I'm excited like you say, man. Let it keep on growing. His steals are coming up. He's averaging one block a game. So I'm excited to see what we can still bring to the table and please, please keep playing that defense and rebounding. Rebound, rebound, rebound. Yeah, absolutely. And rebounding is still something they're gonna have to work on. But Dallas is very, very improved. It's early, it's ten games, it's not a full snapshot. But on the defensive end, Dallas yeah. is incredibly improved this year. Uh, they are currently rated second in defensive efficiency in the league. Opponents are shooting 31% from three. That's not going to be the case all year, but that that's a big thing for you when you have opponents struggling to connect from outside. And we talked about how the three-point shot has become really uh, almost more, not respected, but more... Uh, emulated or idolized uh, around the league. It's become the shot every team seems to be in love with at this point. And opponents mm-hmm. are shooting 31% from Dallas, uh, against Dallas. So mm-hmm. they're shooting the shot more than ever, and they're connecting on it at a very, very low clip. Now the Mavericks have turned their own three-point shooting around, and the offense has moved up significantly, but we're still not. I mean, it's a long way to go before we get back to the top five or even top ten scoring offense in the league. We're averaging only 109.4 points per game. Uh, If you want to get into the top 10, you got to do better than 114.3. So it's five points a game. That's not, it's not like it's not doable, but you're currently 21st in the league in scoring. So bottom 10 still offensively. It's a good thing the defense is there. And the fact that it's there, even with so many guys out, five guys out right now, that's saying something because those are some significant role players, including both of your normal starting three and D wings. Yes, and also notice when we were talking about last time we talked uh, what those uh, games ago against coming off the heel of that Bulls game mm-hmm. rebounds. Yeah, we're sixteenth now, forty four point two now. Remember we was almost bottom of the barrel. Yep. Within four games, that has jumped significantly, and that's because I feel like we've added. Kali Stein in the lineup, Cleaver, um, and then Luca's been going insane, like we've been talking about on the rebounds as well. I mean, he he, he was up there with Kali Stein uh, this last game, but he's all Luke always does that because he's the type to get that rebound and take it coast to coast and do his thing. Yeah, so Dallas has crawled to the middle of the pack in terms of rebounding. They are 16th in the league in rebounds per game. Still a lot of room to grow there. You would like to be better than that. I think they're certainly capable. It's better than when we were like 28th, oh, 29th. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were bottom, <laughs> bottom of the barrel initially. Uh, bottom five in most offensive stats and stats like rebounding. Uh, and so seeing that turn around, that's good. And especially when you consider that we have yet to be at full strength. Like, right. that, there's a lot, a lot of room to grow there that I think will help this team. Uh, another thing to call out here, this is again, going deeper. This is from Bobby Carella on Twitter. This is going deeper into the analytic side of that, uh, second rated defensive efficiency stat. Uh, the Mavericks second lowest volume of field goals allowed inside the restricted area. So in terms of the amount of field goal attempts, opponents are getting inside the restricted area against Dallas. Dallas has the, they're allowing the second fewest in the league. So they're keeping people in front of them and out of the paint. That Mm -hmm. says something. That's, again, Mm -hmm. not only are you keeping them out of the paint, but now you've got three capable, well, once Maxi gets back, three capable shot blockers who are going to make that number even less efficient. Like, they might get to the paint, but they're not converting it at the rate they would normally expect to. He goes on to say uh, that they are, let's see, the highest volume of mid-range field goals attempt. So, in terms of how many uh, mid-range shots opponents are getting, it's the most, it's the highest rate, but that's because you're stopping them short of getting inside the restricted, and so they're settling in that range that most of the league doesn't even operate anymore. So I think that's actually a positive. Back in you know the early 2000s, mid-2000s, that was more the bread and butter. Now it's not. And so I think forcing them to take that shot that's not as comfortable anymore as it used to be for a lot of guys, I think that's 
a win as well. And they are contesting the seventh highest percentage of shots overall. That's great. That's swarming to the ball. That's uh, being defensively uh, dedicated and locked in in that regard. If you're going to do that, if you're going to make guys work at such a rate for anything they get, you're going to give yourself opportunity because the worst thing to see, even you know, if, if the team doesn't make the shot, that's one thing, but the worst thing to see is a pass to a wide open guy in the corner and he's got three seconds to tee up the shot, you know? Mm-hmm. It's demoralizing mm-hmm. whether or not it goes in because even if it doesn't go in, you're like, okay, we got away with it, but geez, man, like we can't be doing that. If you got guys constantly right. flying at them and they're staying, uh, you know, principled to their assignments and everything in that regard on the defensive end, then you really have an opportunity to to bother a team to get them out of their flow and rhythm and just keep them off their game where suddenly they're going to struggle. And that's why five of Dallas's six wins this year, the opponent has been held under 100 points. And uh, we definitely like seeing that. And uh, we definitely need to get that against these Bucks. Uh, because that's going to be a, um, a little good little test today um, to see where where, where we at um, against them, especially with Giannis. Um, I think we're going – I don't know, man. I feel like if uh, we get KP up in there again and he's feeling good, I think we can get another good uh, win, especially with him back, man. I'm really excited to see him out there. I was excited to see him um, in that short time get those buckets, and, mm-hmm. man, it felt good just to watch him. You know what I mean? Like – he has that he has that element, man. You know, we all know about what Luca does, but man, when KP is in there with Luca, the floor spacing he, is uh, night and you day. You feel me? You feel me? It just changes our whole daggone team when them two are in the game. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, KP had a big game in Milwaukee last year. They won in Milwaukee without Luca, and that was probably. I mean, they blew out the Lakers early in the year in LA. But that might have been their biggest eye-opening win of the first half of last season pre-pandemic was going to Milwaukee without Luka. And it was right after they had gone to Philadelphia without Luka and won there. So Mm -hmm. you see how even if you only got KP in the mix for some reason, if KP's right, he'll carry you. He'll carry you for a while. Like I don't know if he's a guy you can lean on as your lead dog for an entire year, obviously. But if you need him in these stretches to step up and he can – uh, he can get kind of the lion's share of the work. He'll do it. The question is whether or not right now he's in that rhythm. And I don't I don't think he's there yet. He played 21 minutes in his debut. I said he would play 25 or less, so I was right about that. I think Dallas mm-hmm. is also going to be creative in terms of how they split up his minutes to try and uh, minimize his fatigue factor, whether that's you know part of it just being returning and playing live speed. It's different than running practices, no matter how hard you run in scrimmages or whatever. It's not the same. Your adrenaline is pumping more. It's going to drain you faster uh, when you're actually playing live games in that regard. So they're going to be creative with how they chop up his minutes. He'll probably play something still in that neighborhood of, I could see, as high as 27 minutes. But we'll see. If his outside shot's falling, and it was falling in his all throughout the bubble, and it was falling in the uh, season debut he had against Charlotte, if his outside shot's falling, he will be damn effective. If it's not you might see a little bit of struggle in that regard because I still think he's going to be a little reluctant uh, attacking the basket relentlessly. Or he did a little bit of posting up, and if he can find some rhythm there, then that'll help. But I think you're going to see mostly early on in this first probably few weeks he's back more of a heightened reliance on three-point shooting like he shot nine the other night. I think you'll see him shoot seven, eight threes a game right now. Yeah, I I can tend to agree with that as far as him. Um I hope he, you know, but I, I, one thing I know about KP, and, you know, we talked about this last year, he doesn't have to be that guy that sticks in the post because he's so daggone versatile and he has yeah. that three-point shot, he has that jump shot. But, man, when he can get in there on that box and get that jump hook rolling, a couple good early jump hooks, I feel like it helps him as well, man. Then then he can kind of get loose and can go to the basket or shoot his three-point shot. I like when he gets that, uh, you know, he can get a couple good dribbles in and because nobody's blocking that shot. No, nah. <laughs> nah, 7-3 and uh, his wingspan, if he's shooting, nah, no one's going to get a piece of that. <laughs> You're not blocking that shot. And he's just, man – Come on, KP. You got me excited again, big dog. I like I like KP. I don't know. People be hating on KP. You know what I mean? But I don't care. I like KP. Yeah. KP, I mean, he, he completely transforms the offense like we talked about. The, the floor spacing is just completely different. And I don't think it's, you know, Luca's been on a hot streak lately. His last five games, he's been absolutely tearing it up. He was the Western Conference Player of the Week 
uh, last week. But I don't think it's a coincidence that KP comes back and Luka is just immediately the other night just in his bag, you know, just doing whatever he wants. Drops, what was it, like 34 uh, points or something like that. Like Luka absolutely had his way in that game. And it's the floor spacing. Yeah, 34 points, 13 boards, 9 assists on 14 of 25. So damn efficient from Luka as well. 5 of 9 from Mm -hmm. 3. Luca's not been a good three-point shooter all year, and he went five right. of nine for um, from three in that game. Like that, that's just the floor spacing. That's him not having to rely on late shot clock step back yep. threes yep. or something like yep. that. He's got someone who has a gravity to his presence and who can draw defenders away. Where suddenly Luca, even if he's not going to shoot a three, but he's going to try and attack the basket. Oh shit! There's an actual lane now. I can actually get through here because the guy's not going to collapse on me. And make me kick exactly. it out, uh, kick it out for a three, which early in the year none of the Mavericks were hitting. Right, right. I mean, you you preaching right now, DDP. You, you got your you got your sermon. You got your <laughs> Bible right now. You 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 preaching right now, big dog. Because that's what it is. How many times do we watch Luca? Like you said, when it's like uh, ten, uh, nine, eight, and he's trying to dribble, you know, come off the, the the screen, dribble off the screen, because there's no offense out there for him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And he has to do anything. And then either he'll go to the hole and he'll do a bad turnover because his, his turnovers have been crazy. I think he had like maybe eight last night. But you know he'll uh, go to the hole and jump in the air. No, he was good last night. Only four. Oh, was he good last night? Yeah. Okay, he's only four. But I know they've been high. Um, but he'll jump in the air and look back, and it's like who's going to shoot it? You know what I mean? And then he's caught, you know. Now you get your KPs in there. Now you get that offensive spacing where, like you said, when he goes to the hole, he can look out, and they they double or triple, KP's sitting right there. Now feeling good. Or guess what? KP is a threat, so now they have to move out the way, and you can't crowd him. And so now he has a lane to be able to do what he can do. Yeah, no, absolutely. It it completely changes the dynamic of the offense. And, you know, that's what you need. And another thing that's helped – uh, just contrasting to when we talked last, we were pretty hard on uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. We were pretty hard on him. And I pointed back, if you recall, I pointed back to the first month of the season last year when he was brutal how bad he was right. shooting. And right. even the game I covered uh, and was in person in the locker room for, he was missing threes, and you could hear him in the press box screaming F-bombs. Like, he was furious he was missing wide open looks and in the in the locker room after the game he was quiet you could just tell he was kind of wearing a little bit of a scowl and I thought like man if he doesn't turn a corner soon I don't know what they're going to be able to do with him whether it's you know him being effective for them or whether it's even the hope of possibly trading his contract at the deadline in some kind of move he's in his head right now he turned the corner, ended up shooting just a hair under 40% from three last year. And the other week when we talked about this, I said, dude, if he can turn that corner like he did then, hopefully it doesn't take a full month. But if he does, the ship will right, the offense will balance out, and it'll crawl out of that hole where the Mavericks were shooting like 30 31% as a team from three. He's up over 42% for the season now shooting threes. He turned the oh, corner yeah. in blazing he, he turned speed. Up them last couple, he, he turned up. He turned up them last few games uh, when he went nutty. Yeah, him and Trey Burke. I mean, that it, it comes quick. But you know, Hardaway is like that. You know, that he's frustrating Streaky. to me. I like him, but he's frustrating. Like sometimes you'll see him on that fast break, and he'll hit two in a row. And you're like, oh shoot, he about to drop like eight or nine this game, or <laughs> you miss like three or four, and you're like, stop. <laughs> don't shoot those anymore because it's like he wants to shoot himself uh, you know out of it like if right. he feels like he has a slump he wants to shoot himself out of the slump but sometimes you be hurting the team Hardaway Jr. but when he went he turned up in Houston he turned up in Denver he turned up or like he's been turning up and I like it you know um we'll see Red- Richardson's out because of the COVID right yeah Richardson's out Dorian Finney-Smith is out Dwight is out Maxie is out, and Jalen Brunson. And we're still doing it. Wait yep. till we get them back, DDP. And that's that's the thing. And it's actually, it's not good to lose those guys, but the silver lining is your guys at the end of the bench, your guys who don't get a lot of reps, a one do and whatnot, they're going to get a lot of opportunity to do something here. 
and it is mm -hmm. it is benefiting the team as a whole. I mean, at this point, you're getting minutes for your young first round pick, Josh Green, who I think can he's he's got a short leash right now. And Carlisle, other than if your name's not Luca, Carlisle's known for not really giving a lot of burn to rookies. He just it's a trust factor, it's a maturity factor. He wants them to adjust to the speed of the game and uh, you know the length and athleticism they're going against, but. I think Green has a chance, especially in these circumstances, to carve out a nice little role for himself. He was good against Charlotte. He had nice flashes. His length, size, and athleticism give him an opportunity to do something in that regard. Now, uh, I, I've talked about this a couple times, but I don't think you'll see a whole lot of Tyrell Terry this year. I think it's going to take time for him to adjust. Yes, he's an absolute marksman three-point shooter, but he's not, he's not a guy with any kind of blazing speed or, you know, he's got good footwork, but I don't think he's a guy who is going to be able to drop in and like, oh, here's 12 points now or even six or seven points from Tyrell Terry, who we played 15 minutes tonight. I think he's still, the size factor is going to be a, a, an issue for him, and I think he has to adjust to the speed of the NBA game and the length of his defenders. It took Steph Curry a little bit of time to figure it out when he got into the league. It took Seth Curry in Dallas. Um, it took him time to figure it out. And he pointed out when I talked with him about this the other day that I had always said that Seth figured it out in 2016 when he came to Dallas. That's when he fully broke through, but he had started to emerge after the All-Star break the previous year with Sacramento. But he didn't really find like a home in the NBA where he wasn't going up and down from the D-League and back until he got to Dallas that first stint. And, you know, for some of these marksmen who don't have, you know, they might be crafty scorers, but they don't have uh, that size or athleticism. That's just what they're going to have to adapt to. And so I don't think you'll see a mm -hmm. lot of Tyrell Terry, but you'll see other weapons on this team get use. And one do in the uh, in the Magic game, that was his former team. He played 32 minutes. He didn't score, but he only took two shots in the game. But six boards, very high energy, good length. I uh, I had talked about how... You know, his three-point percentage for his career isn't that sweet. It's not that great. But it's almost unfair to call that because it was so bad as a rookie that it drags down his career average from three. Uh, if you look at his actual past two years, it's more like 34 35%, which is respectable. So to get a 6'6 guy with that kind of length, energy, athleticism, and a competent three-point shot that we just haven't had a chance to see a lot of yet... That's a great weapon to have on the end of a bench if you're in a situation like this without a Richardson, without a Dorian Finney-Smith. Is it apples to apples? No, but it's a very good emergency reserve. That, I'm, like I said, you got me agreeing with you on every damn point. I want to disagree with you on some stuff, but <laughs> daggone it, you're preaching too daggone good today. Because, like I said, that was a coup to get him. You yeah. know what I mean? When we talked about getting Richardson, like, I, I really like that pickup. I still want him to get a little bit more aggressive at times. Um, but, you know, I like how Richardson's a good two-way player. But I love that's a sneaky pickup in Wando because, like you said, he's he's a guy that you got to sit down. He may not offer a lot of offensively, mm -hmm. but he's long. He's got some good length, and he's a very good defensive player, and he's athletic. And I feel like that's another – element that the, the, the Mavericks need is that, that athletic ability, that defensive athletic ability. Uh, because, like I said, w w if we're it dialed in like we was in that heat game when we was just up in their, in, up in their shorts challenging them like that, mm -hmm. that's the kind of defense I want to see. And that's what I feel like an Awandu can bring. And like I said, he may not play the next when, when those guys get back the next seven, eight, eight, nine, ten games. May get very limited minutes. But, as you said, if somebody gets hurt or comes in, He's the guy that you can bring right in after not playing eight, nine games that can come in and still be effective for you and your team. Yeah, 100%. So the team is on a hot streak right now. It's four games. It's not like they're running roughshod. But these are four games they've won with their scoring really not being anything substantial. That's the thing. They've had mm -hmm. one game, the overtime game, where they went to 124. But other than that, we're looking at 113 against the Rockets. That's nice. 124 against the Nuggets. 98, 104. They're not a high-scoring team yet this year, but they've not been at full strength. And so I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by the thought that they can turn this around offensively. I don't need them to be top five scoring offense. Would that be sweet? Hell yes, it would. You know, but if they can be top 10 in both offense and defense and maintain 
a, a quality degree of health, a general consistency of health, because we had a whole lot of games last year without Luca and KP together. Uh, they both at different stretches missed. I think Luca missed like 11 games last year, and KP was like 17. I'm I'm approximating that in my head. Someone feel free to fact check me on that. But uh, that's a lot of games for your top two guys to be missing. And we know the Mavericks are going to be cautious with KP, so I'm not expecting that. My point is just, if you're healthy, and if you're top 10 in both of those categories, you are, you are legitimate contender status. If you look at the recent champions in NBA history, past decade or so, I think there's one exception. I can't think of who it is off the top of my head, but there's one exception to the team being rated top 10 in both offense and defense. Like, you enter that category if you're there. Seasons like last year where you're number three in points per game, yeah, you're the most efficient offense in NBA history, but even that can be a little bit skewed by just the changing of the era and uh, the way that three-point shots are weighted in the calculations. You, if you're a top three scoring offense, great, but you're 18th in defense, and you're terrible mm-hmm. in the clutch. Last year was never going to be the deep run team. Now, Luka KP bubble style, maybe you had a shot at making a little bit of noise if you were just that damn good offensively. But this is really the first year the window to me is open. And if you got that, you can be, if you got that health and you've got top 10 in both those categories, you can be, uh, you can be a top four seed. You could be as high as number two. I think you're probably going to be more like four, but dude, that's, that's a serious advantage for this team and you want to talk about actually turning heads, that'll do it. And when you had Luka and KP last year, they were playing about that range as the four seed. It's just that they didn't have them together consistently enough, and it caused them to drop all the way down to seven. And that's what we need to happen this year. They need to consistently play together. That's the reason why they got them. Um, Hopefully KP can stay healthy because our team is just a whole different team. When you got those two animals on the on 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 the court together, man, yep. it may it just it just uh, it makes all, like I said the spacing changes, the team changes. You can see the confidence. Uh, my, in my opinion, you can see the confidence of the team. Yeah. When you got KP and Luke out there, this the guys seem to just play a little bit different because they know. Guess what? We got guys. You yep. know, it, it's it's you you watch the games and and you see these teams that you know the Hardens, the the Durant the Kyrie Irvins, they make the difference. That's why they get those guys on the team. You seen with the Nets when Kyrie and Durant, I, I know they got Harden right now, but just when you saw those two together, you were like, okay, that team's going to play different because you got them two. Yeah. When we have our two, it makes everything else better for what we're trying to do. And uh, let's get these bucks tonight. You feel me, DDP? Let's get these guys. For sure. And uh, yeah, when you got two legitimate dogs, two superstars, it, it definitely changes the equation. And that's really the master necessary feature for your offense. But I think something that shouldn't be overlooked as well, I think there's been, as far as the commitment to the defensive end, I think we talk about how much the team kind of made a philosophical change in the offseason and how they went after these long, rangy wings, 3 and D types. Mm-hmm. I don't think it can be state, uh, overstated in any way, it can't be talked about enough, I think, the attitude and the difference that Josh Richardson and James Johnson have made to this team. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, that's yeah. bringing in two, you know, Johnson's, I think, like 32. He's not a young He's not a young player by any means. But I think the kind of attitude and the defensive attitude. commitment, it's something that's been lacking from this team for years. And, yeah, we, we talk about how Dorian Finney-Smith can be a great defender at times. <laughs> Uh, they don't have that attitude. Big, big energy, yes, correct. He does not have that attitude. He does not have that same, uh, that same kind of follow my lead that dog. mentality. <laughs> he don't have that dog. Like I mean, Dora Finley. I, I like Dora Finley, but here's the thing about him: he's athletic, but he's not that guy that you're going to. When Johnson comes in the game, Johnson is getting after people. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it, there's a different type of aggressiveness with him. You know what I mean? It's a different type of aggressive when he comes in the game. It's and, an and a physical he's a aggressive. surprisingly good point forward as well. Yeah. And, and I mean, he's been coming off the bench and giving us some good minutes. 8.6 boards here. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, 
defensively steals, but like I said, I think he gives us that enforcer that we've been needing. He gives us that attitude enforcer when he comes in the game that when he's in the game, you ain't going to be pushing us around. You ain't going to just be doing this and that. And that's what we, we brought. And like you said, when you bring him on the court, it get, I think it gives everybody else that mentality to come harder on defense. It, it's infectious. You yeah. know, well, that's why they get those type of people. Like when you had a Rodman and when it came to the Bulls, why they get them? Not just that rebounding, that infectious attitude. When you got somebody going hard like that, it makes everybody else start stepping up and playing harder defense. And I love that. But more than anything, I think he 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 has given us that that enforcer attitude, and I like it. And I want to see more of it. Him yeah. and Richardson gives us that good get up in your chest. When they get when you get the ball, he's up in your chest. I like that. Get up in. The, you know what I'm saying? Like Duke used to do, slap the floor and get up in them. Because when we get up in people like that, man, our team is so much better. And then, like I said, you don't have to be great shooting that night if you're locking people down on defense. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, when him and Richardson were flying into Dallas, I think they had the same flight. Richardson posted like an Instagram story basically saying like, all right, the dogs are coming. And uh, the dogs are on the way, basically. And I think it has... Uh, committed to that. It's not just, you know, Carlisle is a much better defensive coach than he's given credit for. I just think he didn't have the guys that were the right tools for that. And so the recommitment to that certainly helps. And it's got to be a team wide belief. But I think having the guys that can take that edge and lead, I think that's everything. You got to have someone that shows you how to do it. And it's got to be, I think when it's your peer versus just a coach, I think it's, it's easier to replicate and to buy into. And so, yeah, I, whether or not Luca being around them helped or influenced his commitment to the defensive end because, yeah, he worked hard defensively in the bubble and you saw it at times flashes. But now you're starting to see consistency with it. And when you're going against these guys and practice and everything, I, I think it changes that where you learn from them. It's not just like matching up and having them guard you as you're trying to do anything in practice. <clears throat> it's actual application and working one on one on technique and things like that. So. I'm very, very uh, high on their additions to this team. I was high when both of them... <laughs> I was high. Uh, I was high up on that, uh, that <laughs> acquisition in both cases. I liked it a lot. And I think it's it's absolutely invaluable what it's brought to this team. And I think that's a big part contributing to this kind of defensive transformation. I don't expect them to be number two rated defense all year. I think they'll probably slide back to still being like at the bo bottom end of the top 10. But even still that's a substantial improvement when you look at where they were last year and especially how many games they lost in the clutch because they couldn't stop a runny nose, let alone the opposing team. Mm -hmm. So it'll, uh, it'll be good. And tonight's game against the Bucks, this will be a good challenge. If they can get past this game, they might have a chance to, to make a little bit of a run here to, with this streak. Like we look at it and the Bucks, that's a damn challenge, but they then go home to play the Bulls, get a little revenge on that, just like they got revenge on their bad Charlotte loss earlier this year, which was one of Luka's worst games of the year, actually, um, that first Charlotte game. So now you got a chance to get revenge on that Bulls game on Sunday. Then you got to go to Toronto. Toronto is not the same team they were last year. They're they're right. not near the, as good as they were last year. They're 3-8, and eight, and uh, there's tension and everything with Siakam. I think he got suspended a game for basically detrimental behavior to the team or something like that. So there's all kinds of mismatch going on there. You got a chance to get one there. Uh, Pacers just traded Oladipo, so they're going to look a little different. There, there, you got a chance. Spurs, Rockets. Obviously, Houston, we'll see what they look like now with Oladipo instead and Harden gone. Eastside, I'm not even sorry for you, honestly. <laughs> right. But, right. uh, yeah, so we'll see what they're able to do with it. But Victor, I'll be hey, and Did you see what it just says? Victor doesn't want to uh, stay in uh, Houston? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't blame Come him. Come on over here. Yeah, he Yeah, sure. Why not? In the summer, dog, I think he's a free agent. So. If we got Victor all over the ooh, dog, dog. It, yeah, got, now he, he wants know? a max contract, so I want to see what he does this year health-wise because he hasn't looked like the all-star he was since he tore up his knee. But he has – bounced back quite well. The thing is he went from being the lead dog superstar to being just a good uh a good quality like contributor for them in the regard of like a top 3 guy on their team, like one of their big 3 but not the guy anymore. Mm -hmm. So, I want to see what he looks like health-wise and all that, but if he wants a max contract, I want to be a little bit cautious there 
So we'll see, but I'm certainly open to the discussion. So I'll be covering tonight's right. game. Uh, I'll have clips and or audio for a show tomorrow morning I'm going to do. Breaking that down, talking about the game. That'll be the post-game show. It'll probably be the equivalent of two segments long for the new show. Dallas Prospect Live, which I relaunched just in the past week. Uh, then I'll also be covering Wednesday's game at Indiana and the Saturday game against the new look Houston Rockets as well. So busy week coming up for me as I cover uh, cover these games as a credentialed media member, which, hey, Dallas Prospect got there on its own merit. That's pretty sweet. That, yeah, that's very sweet, and that's very dope, and I'm proud of you, my dog, and I can't wait till you give us that good insight uh, when, you know, you get to check out some games, and then, you know what I'm saying, whenever we get back on, uh, we'll do it. But that's huge when you're going out there on your own, you feel me? Not yep. from the, the 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 systems and the media society. My guy got this on his own, and that ain't easy to get no media credentials. I want y'all to really understand that. To be your own independent person and get media credentials, that's dang near impossible. So what DDP is doing is ridiculous. So make sure y'all like this video. Y'all like his page. Let's get them subs up because this man goes hard in the paint, especially for Mavericks basketball. And as I said before, you do not see independent people get media credentials. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I tried for three years to get these credentials for Prospect, and I finally broke through this year. And uh, it's a, it's a one-man operation as far as the channel and website and all that. I want to build a team. Uh, as far as like actual doing this full time and everything, but can't do that right now. So to get there as just a solo independent creator, pretty sweet, pretty pretty awesome to get to that level on my own merit at this point. So yeah, appreciate definitely. the uh, the shout out and everything, and obviously appreciate you coming on here and talking Mavericks basketball. Always a joy to do that with you. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, tell them uh, tell them about your page, where to find you as we wrap this thing up. Uh, yeah, check me out on uh, Big Game Things. You can check me out on my Silver and Blue Nation. Um, if you like any Cowboys football, I do heavy Cowboys content. Uh, like I said, I've been doing the D uh, Dallas content with uh, DDP. Going to start probably doing maybe some watch parties here and there on my channel. You know, open the door to some Mavericks basketball since that's my other team in the Dallas area. Um, you can also check me out on Facebook. we got a Silver and Blue Nation page over there. My guy Ryan Humphrey is running that page. Make sure you can check that out. He's got good feedback over there. My Big Game James page is also on Facebook if you'd like to check that out. Very interactive. Always Cowboys football. We always keep it real. And then um, Twitter handle at Yates James, Y-A-I-T-E-S. Uh, you know, just talk about regular things on Twitter, Cowboys, Mav, all the good stuff. Just try to keep it real. So if you'd like to, like, real talk and have a – family type atmosphere and where you just feel free come on over and check me out man sounds good man all right well that's gonna do it for our time as james said don't forget to like this video drop a comment below subscribe to the dallas prospect and silver and blue nation and until next time remember every legend was once a prospect peace